Hi, I'm Eric from Stinger. Today we're going to be upgrading this Jeep Wrangler JK with the Horizon 10. It's going to add tons of awesome features like four camera inputs, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it has an IP65 weather resistant display. So come with me as I show you how to upgrade your Jeep Wrangler JK. The tools we're going to use for this installation are a drill with a Phillips bit, 7mm socket, 10mm socket, nylon pry tool, crimpers, flush cutters, razor knife, and zip ties. Begin the installation by removing the knee bolster below the steering column. Pull the top edge away from the dash and work down both sides. Then remove this panel from the vehicle. This gives access to the two 7mm bolts that need to be removed from here, one on each side. Next, remove the window control panel, or storage bin, by grabbing the switch or bin and carefully using a nylon pry tool to release it from the dash. The window switch has a latch tab with a lock. If present, slide the red lock tab out in order to release the clip on the connector. Press the black latch tab down to remove the switch module. Then remove the 7mm bolt from the bottom of this opening. Then remove the tray liner from the top of the dash, and remove the 7mm bolt. Now reaching inside the window latch opening and pulling the upper dash forward to unclip it. Carefully roll the upper dash panel toward yourself to remove it from the vehicle. Now we can remove the four 7mm bolts securing the radio into the dash, two on the driver's side and two on the passenger side. Then remove the head unit by pulling it out. Then disconnect and remove all the harnesses and antenna connectors from the radio by pressing on their latch tabs and removing them. To remove the climate control panel at the bottom of the dash, we'll turn the Jeep on but not start it. Now we can shift out of park into neutral to get extra clearance for the dash panel. Pull this panel toward the rear of the vehicle to disengage clips on both sides. Then release and disconnect each of the connectors on the back of this panel. For vehicles with factory Uconnect, Remove the two 7mm screws securing the Uconnect module located behind the climate control panel. Unplug the factory USB cable connected into the U-Control module. Plug the factory USB cable into the included USB UN3 adapter. Then route the USB A end up through the dash into the radio opening. Reinstall the two 7mm screws to secure the Uconnect module into place. Now we can assemble the radio module, harnesses, and brackets on the bench. The two metal side brackets are identical. They can be mounted on either side of the radio module. Align the holes in the metal bracket with the holes on the sides of the radio module. Then attach the bracket using two M5 by 10 Phillips screws. Repeat this process on the other side. If you're installing the optional iGo navigation software, Insert the micro SD card into the slot. This will give you maps on your Horizon 10 without using your cell phone. Locate the main vehicle harness. There are three connectors that will connect to the Horizon adapter harness. Connect the two pin connectors, connect the 14 pin main connectors, and connect the smaller eight pin audio connectors. The small three pin harness connects into the small port on the pack link. Now we can make connections on our radio replacement module. Connect the radio harness into the module. Connect the power harness the vehicle harness, and for the audio harness, if the Jeep is not factory amplified, connect into the second port. If it has a factory amplified system, connect the harness into the port labeled amplified. Connect either end of the shorter 10 pin to 10 pin harness into the port labeled expansion port. Connect the other end of the cable into either 10 pin port on the pack link. The vehicle harness has accessory power connections that can be used if installing cameras or enlightened lighting products. The blue wire with the white stripe is a remote turn on wire. If you're adding aftermarket amplifiers, use this wire to turn them on. This small two pin data plug is for the T harness we'll install under the steering column. Now we can attach the radio replacement module to the mounting bracket. Align the module to one side of the mounting bracket. Then pass two zip ties through the module bracket, through the mounting tabs on the module. Then tighten the zip ties and trim off the excess. Pass a zip tie through the back of the pack link module and secure it to the mounting panel next to the Radio Pro module. Then trim off the excess of the zip tie. Now slide the radio bracket assembly in between the two metal brackets in front of the radio module. 
For each side, align the bracket module with the two holes on the side bracket. Using number six coarse thread screws, attach each module bracket to the side brackets. Once we get the screw started, it helps to apply a little bit of forward pressure on the plastic bracket to ensure that the screw passes below the mount. Using two M4x4 screws, mount the support bracket to the top of the radio module. Note the orientation of the bracket. The word front should be facing away from the radio module, toward the front of the vehicle when it's installed. Finally, insert the included clip-on nut to the top of the bracket. This is for vehicles that do not have a factory support bracket. Connect the antenna adapter. This is the fiber optic audio output. If you're installing a Sirius XM tuner, connect the cable here. Connect the data cable into the port labeled data. This is where we can connect enlightened lights for control. This is the AV input harness. This is where you'll connect any cameras you add to the Horizon 10 to utilize its four camera inputs. Connect this harness into the port labeled AV in. There are several flying leads on the harness that connects into the Horizon 10. These are the negative output triggers for accessory control. The RCA pre-out harness is used for connecting external amplifiers and expanding your audio system. Connect this harness into the port labeled pre-out. Connect the large black connector into the port labeled power. In the vehicle, we will connect the GPS antenna here, and these are the USB ports we will connect adapters. The dash mount USB extension cable has an optional weatherproof cover. If you wish to use the weatherproof cover, pass the ends of the USB cables through the opening and pull the slack through so the cover is on the end of the connector. In this vehicle, the cigarette port has already been removed. Typically, what you would do is remove the metal insert from around the power outlet by releasing the two retaining clips with a small pick tool and pushing it out the front side. Then remove the plastic sleeve by pressing the two plastic tabs and pushing it out the front as well, leaving an opening in the panel like we have here. Now we can pass both USB cable ends through the front of the panel and pull the slack out the back. Confirm the orientation you want for your USB ports. Then thread on the flanged nut. Now secure it into position by installing the locking nut. Under the steering column, remove the two 10mm bolts securing the black metal plate. Then slide this plate up and toward the back of the Jeep to remove it. This allows us to access the CAN bus connection point. Press in on the latch tab of the factory connector and pull it out to remove it. One of the supplied T-harnesses will match your factory connector. Plug the male end of the factory connector into the female end of our T-harness. Then connect the male end of our T-harness into the factory connector. Ensure it clicks into place for a reliable operation. Then route this two-pin cable up through the dash to the radio opening. If you choose to install the optional external microphone, it's recommended to install the windshield. Slide the microphone into one of the supplied brackets. Microphone mounting location is a personal option, so the driver can choose where the microphone is going to be installed. We found good results mounting the microphone on top of the steering column. Then route the microphone's 3.5 mm connector through the dash to the radio opening. Pull the excess of the cabling into the dash and secure it with zip ties. Then trim the excess of the zip ties. There's an included metal plate to use with the magnetic GPS antenna. Make a 90 degree bend in the metal plate about two thirds of the way down. This creates a ledge that stops the antenna from sliding off the back, as well as it makes it fit our Jeep quite nicely. Remove the adhesive backing from the metal plate and attach it to this plastic tab behind the instrument cluster. Place the GPS antenna on the metal plate. Then route the cable through the dash to the radio opening. Take the excess cable, bundle it up, and secure it with a zip tie. Again, trim the excess off your zip ties. Now we can take the climate control panel back to the Jeep, where we'll route the USB cables up through the lower opening, through the center of the dash, to the radio opening. 
reinstall the connectors into the climate control panel. The connector for the 12 volt power outlet will not be used because we now have installed USB extensions in its place. Then snap the climate control panel back into place. Rest the radio assembly on top of the dash. Connect the GPS antenna. Connect the USB-C end of the dash mount extension cable into the port labeled phone. Connect the USB-A end of the dash mounted extension cable into either of the USB-A ports on the radio module. Connect the AM-FM antenna adapter into the white Fokker connector. If installing any enlightened products, connect the four pin connector from the controller into this plug that's labeled RGB UART. If installing any cameras, be sure to connect the camera outputs to these yellow inputs. The red and black wires labeled aftermarket camera are switched accessory power that can be used to power cameras or enlightened lights that are added to the vehicle. Connect the 3.5 millimeter connector from the microphone into the port labeled external mic. If you're connecting any external amplifiers, connect those RCAs into your RCA outputs at this point. Be sure to connect this 2-pin connector from the T-harness that we ran from the steering column into this 2-pin connector labeled Data Connection. This is where the Radio Pro gets CAN bus information from the Jeep. Plug the vehicle connector into the end of the main harness. Plug either end of the LVDS cable into the back of the radio module in the port labeled Display. Keeping track of the end of this LVDS display cable, carefully push the rest of the cables inside the dash and insert the radio assembly into the dash. Then install the original 7mm screws to secure the radio module. Now make sure we keep track of this LVDS cable. We're going to reinstall the dash panel onto the Jeep so that the LVDS cable exits the radio opening. Be careful not to pinch any wiring when reinstalling the dash panel. Also ensure that the window control switch exits its correct location. Now we're ready to plug the LVDS cable into the back of the display. Align the cable so the locking clip is facing away from the display. The plug will click when it's locked into position. Now let's perform a functionality test. Turn the Jeep on and ensure that you have audio. Verify that steering wheel controls operate properly. Verify you have AM FM reception. If you've installed any cameras, verify that they're operating properly as well. Once we've verified functionality, now we can finish assembling the display. Before we can mount the display into the panel, we need to remove the half moon shaped tabs from both sides of this opening. They need to be removed completely, so we'll use flush cuts to trim them flat. Then using a razor knife, we'll make sure that we remove any burrs so they are completely smooth. This will allow the cover door to go on much easier. Then using the four M4x12 screws, attach the display to the mounting panel. Place the horizon display face down on a soft surface to avoid damaging it. If we align the mounting panel with the back of the display, we can see that we're going to use the four outermost mounting holes. So we need to install rubber plugs into the six innermost mounting holes. Install one rubber plug in each hole. Use four M4x12 screws to attach the display to the mounting panel. Partially screw four M4x10 screws into the side holes of the mounting panel. Ensure the screw does not pass by the inner edge of the plastic. You can now take the display to the Jeep and connect it. Reinstall the 7mm bolt behind the window control switch. Then reconnect the plug into the switch and snap it back into the dash. Using the Horizon 10 box on the center console to support the display, plug the LVDS cable into the back of the display with the tab facing up. Route the cable down and through the split rubber ring at the bottom of this opening. 
The wire cover has small tabs, and the back of the display has notches. Align the tabs with the notches and place the cover on the back of the display. Now, using a pry tool, slide the cover down to where the screw hole is visible through the opening at the bottom. Then use the supplied M2.6 by 6.5 screw to hold the cover into place. Attach the display assembly by aligning the locating ribs on the sides of the mounting panel to the sides of the brackets to center the panel side to side. Center the display assembly into the radio opening and push inward until it's snapped into place. Once the locking clips engage, the panel will stay in place. Use a screwdriver or a drill with a Phillips bit to tighten the four screws. Install the front frame by hooking it at the top first, pulling it toward yourself, then swinging it down to snap the sides and bottom into position. Install the 7mm bolt on the top of the dash and replace the rubber tray liner. Reinstall the two 7mm bolts below the steering column. Slide the black metal plate into position and reinstall the two 10mm bolts. Reinstall the knee bolster panel. And that completes the installation of our Jeep Wrangler JK integrated kit for the Horizon 10.